guys, today I got a 2005 Ford Taurus and it's got a problem where it just won't go. What happened is the guy was just driving down the road, everything was just fine, right? And that just slowly started losing the momentum and it went to where it just revs and doesn't actually move down the road. Now, once I seen the customer complaint on the ticket, I already knew what the actual fault was. I just had to verify it. And uh, this is a very common problem on the four Tauruses and the Windstars that use the AX4S, the AX4N, the 4F50N transmissions. What happens is right here, this part sticks into the torque converter, splines into it. And then this side, the other end of it goes through the valve body and this end splines into the transmission pump. So this needs to spline in and turn the pump to create fluid pressure, hydraulic fluid pressure so we can move the vehicle. And it also needs to get the source of the spin, the power from the torque converter. What happens on this side is that the threads on here, the splines on here are just fine, but on the torque converter, the internal hub inside of there, they strip out. So uh, the torque converter spin around, 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 just fine, right? As the engine's running, and this is never getting spun, or it's getting spun every once in a while a little bit, and that's it. It needs to constantly spin so it can drive the fluid pump on this end and create the hydraulic pressure, else your clutches will never apply, and you'll never move down the road. So today, I'm gonna show you with a, a, a very simple uh, test you can do uh, without even any tools, really. Uh, there's a real simple test, and then there's an actual verification phase of this test, if you wanna be really sure, like I have to be, uh, before I tell a customer that you need a transmission or a torque converter or whatever. So I'll show you how to do that now. All right, now the vehicle is obviously broken down and we're working outside. So we're just gonna have to deal with the sun here and there. I'll try to make it as clear as possible, but make it uh, extra bright on the screen here every once in a while. So first thing we're gonna do is check the transmission fluid level. And you may be thinking, well, anybody knows to check the transmission fluid level when there's a trans problem. How is this any kind of good information? Well, we're gonna do it in a special way. We're gonna check the transmission fluid level with the engine off. So get the engine off, hood open, and then the uh, driver's side by the firewall here, and then over here is the throttle body and the air filter is a yellow dipstick right there. We're gonna take that out and we're gonna check the level on here while the engine's off. Okay, so you may notice that the transmission fluid level is really high inside of there. It's way up here when it should be way down here in the hatch marks, right? And that is totally normal because the transmission fluid pump is not spinning because the engine's off. Now, we're going to see if that transmission fluid pump is still not spinning when the engine's on. We're gonna, next, we're going to test the transmission fluid level while the engine is just sitting there at an idle. And if the pump is working properly, that transmission fluid level, when we wipe this off and we check it again, should be down here in the regular hatch marks on there. And that's how you know the transmission fluid pump is working. The fluid level will drop down to the normal, normal range once the vehicle is running. Okay, we're gonna get a little bit more invasive now with our testing procedures, but we still don't need a pressure gauge. All we need is an extension, a ratchet, and a 716 socket. And we're gonna pull off the line pressure port on the transmission, it's right on top of it. Here's the battery right here, obviously. And then there'll be one, one port right there. That's the EPC port, we don't want that. The next port back, and there's only two on top of here, see if I can get over here and show you there it is this port right here the second one back it's always the second one back that's the one we want to take out we're gonna take that little plug out of there and then we're gonna start the engine and see if fluid shoots out of there or not ideally you'd have a pressure gauge on there screw it into there we'll check pressure but if you don't all you need is an extension and a socket we're gonna pull the plug out and start the engine again and if there's fluid pumping out of there, the pump is just fine and you have another failure. All right, so I'm gonna show you me taking it off of there. It's just a little plug, but some people like to see uh, the work done on there. It's gonna kind of lose focus here and there. There we go. And you just unscrew it out of there. 
damn back. And they put a little rag over it. And then we can start the car and see if we're pumping or not. And there it is, nothing's coming out of there. It's that simple to diagnose one of these. That should be just spewing out of there right now, big time. They have geysers. Nothing. Now there was a recall on the Ford Freestar, which is the new version of the Windstar, uh, just for this exact issue on the torque converters, which is kind of weird considering we've never seen a Freestar for this issue. We've always seen it on the older Windstars and Taurus vehicles. Either way, if you have this issue where your vehicle just will not move uh, and you put it into any gear, reverse, drive, one, it doesn't matter, and you don't feel even the engagement into the gear like that, anything like that, um, this is a very easy test to tell exactly what you need to do and what steps you need to take next. Now, if you do have this issue and you just did that little test I've just shown and you're not getting nothing shooting out of that pressure port plug on there, you're definitely going to have to pull the transmission out and change that torque converter, uh, which is an expensive job and it's a lot of labor. Uh, the only good thing is you usually can just change that torque converter out on there and uh, just put the transmission back in. You don't need uh, to... Um, actually go into the guts of the transmission and tear anything apart. Once it loses that line pressure like that, the servo or the clutches, depending what gear you're in, are usually just lose their prime and they actually lose uh, the grip on the clutches and they totally release on there and therefore they can't half spin over each other and burn up. So usually the rest of the transmission is okay. It's the only saving grace uh, with this kind of failure on the AX4S, 4N, and 4F50N.